Hey there, guys, and welcome to the Center Bounce. Where today I will be live in person showing you and applying the exact process, all those tips and tricks, all those resources that we gave you in that previous video. We're going to show you how I use it with Carl Amon. Let's go. So yes, without further ado, we are going to start talking about the one and only Carl Amon. I have him in the latest iteration of my team. It is a bit of a left wing selection outside of the box, not the traditional approach. However, for that price and based on the type of role that he is now going to be playing over there at the Hawks, as well as some historical aspects, historical scoring that he has shown playing in that role, he has piqued my interest. And I am, at this point in time, giving him a shot and I'm not discounting him as a selection option. Because we shall see. So let's share the screen, come to... This was, as I mentioned in that resources video that Big J and I did the other day that you would have seen, DFS Australia, Mort's, much love to your Mort's, an incredible website that you've got here for both Supercoach and Fantasy as well as the AFLW as well. But we're here talking Supercoach and we're here talking Carl Amon. Excuse the ads that are going to pop up, guys, every now and then. It is what it is. We're going to have to put up with it a little bit. He has to make his money somehow for all of the hard work that he puts into making this incredible website. So we press AFL. We want to go to the player summary. We want to make sure that we select super coach because we are super coaches here today. And once it loads, we'll come here and we'll type in Carl. Amon, get up here, son. This, I love it. Even shows us pictures of every season that has gone by, what he looks like, some career averages year upon year. And I like, I like looking to see at the trajectory of how this player is developing, I suppose, when it comes to his super coach journey. And you'd see over, you know, mostly there is an improvement. A couple of years in the 90s, which is pretty good, pretty good playing for Port Adelaide, comes across to the Hawks and averages at 86. So you'd think, oh, it's a bit of a regression there. He's had a, certainly had a hit to his CBAs. But you'll notice that there's been a jump up in KI stands for kick-ins. You know who take kick-ins? Defenders. People playing in the back line, or in most cases, and they only say Tim English. Um, absolute, absolute degenerate scoring from Tim English, but we digress. So we come here. These are the game logs all the way back from 2012 available, but we're not want to go that far back. We want to look in recent times what has been going on with Carl Amon. Are we seeing something different now? And just looking at it here in a general uh, I suppose a general look over it, all these stats, the year, the round, the team that he played for, obviously Hawthorne, his, op his opponent, his opposition, his kicks, handballs, kick to handball ratio. Ideally, would like a nice kick to handball ratio, which involves more kicks than handballs because kicks score you more points than handballs. Disposal efficiency, how clean he is, how many marks, tackles, hitouts, the ruck contests, no surprise, he's going to have 0%. Uh, freeze for, freeze against, goals behind, center bounce attendances percentage. Kick-ins, the percentage of the times that he played on from a kick-in. The time on ground as a percentage, his super coach score is points per minute. Uh, I'd like to think that I'm not entirely sure what TS stands for, but it's uh, definitely his position. Uh, hate maps, and this is just a map, which if we scroll down to the bottom, will tell you green defensive 50. Uh, blue is defensive midfielder, orange, yellow, mustard is forward mid, and the red is forward 50. Now, we don't like forward 50 players in Supercoach because that means they're not entirely around the ball. What we like to see is a lot of the other colors, and that's what we get in spades with Carl Amon. 
He has not been recruited by Hawthorne come to Port Adelaide to be playing in the back line. However, they did give him, if we look here from his first, uh, this is his first game, round one. Oops, sorry, that's round 23. Round one against the Bombers, he had 20 disposals, 12 plus 8 is 20. At 80% efficiency, he had 6% of the center bounces, and it tells us that he played on a wing. Now, I don't necessarily always take it for, take it to heart what it uh, what the word is, wing, back pocket, half back line. I like to click on the heat map and see exactly where it was playing. And yes, this does look very wingy to me. And we don't like wing. We don't like people who play on the wing in Supercoach because the wing is very fluctuating and it is inconsistent when it comes to the scoring because there could be there could be games where the ball is stuck on one wing and you're racking it up like crazy. And then there are other games where it's on the other side and you are dead set super far away from the ball and not getting a touch. So we don't like that. If you're on a wing, we're not happy about that. And you can see that there's a lot of wing, a lot of wing action, and that's it's understandable. That was the role he played mostly at Port Adelaide. And so he's and he's not a spring chicken either. As you can see, he's played how many seasons now? He's, he's, now into, he's played eight seasons of AFL football. It's no surprise. You'd think you'd know what this guy is good at. However, it's never too late for a role change. And we've seen it. We've seen it because there is one thing that clearly changes in this table without having to scan a lot. And it's this column. All of a sudden, from there are no there are no numbers here, no numbers here until all of a sudden we start to see. Hey, wait a second, we've got a hundred percent play on percent from kick in. Another one, another one. This one's fifty percent. He had two kick in, so he played on once out of the two. A hundred percent kick uh, play on from four, and two thirds of these kick-ins he played on from. So all of a sudden, something has changed. He's now taking kick-ins. And if you're playing on a wing, you're not meant to be taking kick-ins. And even though it says wing here, let's have a closer look and see. Well, would you look at that? There's quite a bit of disposals here in the back 50, and it's sort of roamed up the ground. You know, when you're... Modern day players aren't going to be stuck in their defensive 50 if they're playing in the back line, especially a guy of Carl Amon's capacity. He's more than capable of drilling a goal from around 50 meter arc. So it makes sense. When it's time to press, we press. When it's time to defend, we defend. But you look at the concentration of the heat map, it is mostly in the back line. This is what we like to see. So that was in round 17. He had the move to the back line by the looks of things. And he scored 96 points, a nice little jump up from this really sad three-week period where he only averaged 61. All of a sudden, he's been chucked on to, into the back line where he's taken two kick-ins. And this is not too shabby. 27 disposals as opposed to 19, 18, and 20. So they want to get the ball in his hands. They recruited him not to get uh, some mediocre disposals. Here. They want the ball in his hand. They want him to be damaging with it. So you know what? Let's put you behind the ball. First time trying it. Seemed to be okay. What happened in this game? We can just right-click here. Open it in a new tab. And we can see what happened in the game. They played against the Giants. They narrowly lost, which is a very good, um, a very solid effort there against the Giants at their home ground as well. So that's pretty good. And it automatically is sorting, sort, sorting by fantasy points. He was top of the charts in the fantasy point scoring for Hawthorne. Now, fantasy, unlike Supercoach, for all of you who aren't in the know, fantasy does not take into account disposal efficiency. So if there are clangers, if there are turnovers, that is an issue. So... He had the most fantasy points. He was the only one in the entire team. In fact, he he was the, one of two players in that game to get over 100 fantasy. Him and Stephen Canelio, who appears to be the top, yeah, the top super coach scorer. Wow. So that, that's really good. That's a massive turnaround. Now, 
doesn't exactly tell us what his clangers, what his turnovers were like. So we use another one as we featured of our trusty resources, and that is Footy Wire. I've already pre-typed him in, Carl Amon, and we've gone to games. So what round was that? They played in round 17. So let's go here. We'll go to round 17. What happened in round 17? 27 disposals, six marks, which is great, four tackles. He had two clangers, which means that he lost eight points. Where How do I know this? Because with Supercoach scoring, not every stat is positive, as I mentioned. Negative acts like turnovers and free kicks lose points. Both are negative four points. And if you cop a 50, you're losing 8.5, which is ridiculous. So he's lost. He's given he's had two clangers, so two turnovers, and he's given, and that's essentially minus eight points. So essentially, this could have been 104 and would have married up very closely, very nicely with his 105 in fantasy. So it's a positive sign, positive sign there. All right. I like what I saw there from this first game behind the ball. We then move to the next game, his second game playing a halfback. Now let's confirm. Did he play at halfback? Let's have a look at that heat map again. Well, this heat map screams wing, doesn't it? He's got disposals on both sides of the ground. But the interesting thing is that he's also got disposal in the middle and in the back line. What happened in this game? Who did they play? They played against North Melbourne. Okay. Now, I've sort of got it open here. It was a thumping win. And really should have won by more. 12 goals, 16 behind. So they got killed. North Melbourne got absolutely killed, as you'd expect. Sorry, sorry, Big J. And the Hawks dined and feasted on him. So it would make sense for the ball to really not be very dangerous close to goal and for him to want to be involved as a leader, pushing up the ground, trying to get involved in the play, because most of the play wasn't in their defensive 50 because they smashed him. Most of the play was in the middle and forward of center. The most the critical thing is we don't see a lot of ball here, and that's the worst part of the ground to get the ball. So I can forgive him in this game for having a lot of time outside outside defensive 50, considering what sort of match it was. Oof, it was a killing game. But what sort of stats did he have? He had 33 disposals at 85% efficiency. That is incredibly, that is very efficient, very clean. Four marks. Only the one tackle. He got a goal as well, just for good measure, just to uh, add insult to injury. And he scored 113. That is really, really good. We love to see it. And another thing to note is James Sicily came back that week. Now, James Sicily's back. He's clearly the general of the back line. Does that mean that with Sicily back, that Amon is going to be pushed back into the wing position because that heat map showed a lot of wing, if we recall. So is it because North Melbourne was smashed or is it because James Sicily came back? Well, let's have a look and see. We'll have a look at the next week's game to sort of find out a little bit more. So what happened? They played against Richmond, 27 disposals, very cool. It says wing here. Open it up. What has it got to show us? That does not look like wing to me. That does not look like a wing to me. That looks like a guy who's playing off halfback, wanting to go for a run. A dashing halfback. Looking to break lines and have aggressive positioning as well. Now, don't be surprised with Carl Amon if you see dots around close to the 50 meter mark because he can kick a goal from 50. So, this is good. This is him being offensively minded, and this is sort of exactly what Hawthorne wanted. They've given him a task. We want you to be around the ball, breaking lines, using your skills, and this is where they're going to play him. This is a tremendous heat map, and therefore the appearance of Sicily has not kicked him out. He had 27 disposals at 85%, 7 marks, which is excellent. 
the number of marks just automatically goes up when you're playing in the back line. Uh, he's got two free kicks there, three kick-ins, and he played on uh, all, the, all the time. And he had 103 super cut, which is excellent. That's what we want. We want 100 plus. If you can get to 105 plus, would be more ideal. But so far, in his first three games, he's averaging 104. And that's what we like to see. We move to the next game against the Bulldogs. Forward pocket. What? Let's have a look. That does not look like forward pocket to me, my friends. This looks like, again, a running, gunning, dashing half back. He's in the middle of the ground where you want your runners to run and just blaze a hole, blaze a line straight through the ground. And that's exactly what the idea that we're getting. A lot of disposals as well by the looks of things. What have we got here? He's had 32 disposals at 91% efficiency. Holy moly. That's wonderful. 13 marks, which is excellent. Two kick-ins. He only played in one, so he lost a point there for a kick. It is what it is. And he ended at 133. So that is against the Bulldogs as well, who are no slouches, I must say. So that's really impressive. We get to the next game against Melbourne. Again, this kick-to-handball ratio is sensational. We want more kicks than handballs, especially if they have really high dispersal efficiency. And that's just more points. It is more points. He had eight times the number of kicks and handballs. This is what we want to see. And 81% efficiency, 14 marks. Again, three points. Uh, he had one free against, so he lost four points there. Four kick-ins. He played on all the time. Well done, son. And 82%. 119. 119 super coach points for this game. Let's have a look at that heat map. It's a really interesting, weird looking heat map. So, a lot of disposals in the back 50, but also on this defensive side of the wing on this side. And that's sort of what I mentioned very early on in this video, actually, when I'm looking at the heat maps and then why we don't like wingers. Because you can have games where the ball is stuck on one side of the wing and never see it on the other side. And that is almost what this is showing us. So against the Bulldogs, was it? No, against Melbourne. So this was against Melbourne, who might... They don't have the best disposals, um, the best kicks off halfback. They got Bowie, they got Salem, who are both pretty good. But for some reason, Melbourne, when it comes to their offensive ball movement, can be pretty shoddy. Um, and they can be really stubborn, stuck in their ways, and just continue to persist fighting the only way they know how very belligerently. So I'm not surprised, really, that Melbourne continue to attack through one side of the ground. Um, but it is what it is. Well done, 119 there. So this is the five-game average, which averaged 112.8. He's averaged 113 in these five games, which is absolutely sensational. And that, that does put him in the top six defensive players uh, in Supercoach of last year. Obviously, this year might be different. But if you're going to average 110 plus, then that puts you in the top six defenders. And we look at the last game, what happened? He only scored 76. He played on two thirds of the time. He had a goal, so it must have been terrible. What's happened? 23 disposals, 20 kicks. Aha. Uh -huh. well, that's 70% disposal efficiency. That's not very good. Let's have a look at that heat map. And again, he's playing predominantly in the back line and then dashing out, running and gunning out of the back line. So again, that just goes to show that he's played some quite a few games there where he played in the back line. And that is the role change that we wanted to see. Um, what sort of clangers did he have in this game? Round 24 against the Dockers. Nine marks. He had five clangers that game. Five of them. Five times 420. He lost 20 points just from inerrant mistakes in that game. So he really was on a 96 for that. This really should have been a 96 as opposed to a 76. What happened in that game against Fremantle? Did they win that game? I think they might have got smashed. All right. They got put down fairly significantly. Um, but here he is, 103 fantasy 
One of three players. One of three players for the Hawks and only two players for Fremantle. So he got his hands on it. He was involved in the play, just didn't use the ball well that game and turned it over a few too many times and just wiped off 20 points from his score. But you just get the idea of what sort of play he is capable of. If this was a 96 as opposed to a 76, let's have a look. So right now, with a 76, his average is 106.7. But let's say, we keep that 96, 113, plus 103, plus 133, plus 119, plus 96. If he didn't kick like, if he didn't have blindfolds on that game, let's just say, right? And over this course of six games, that is a 110 flat average. That is a top six defender average over the course of six games. And he would get defensive DPP in that way also. How do we know as well that this sort of role is going to continue? All right, he played these six games in the back line at the back half of last year. All right, what does that mean? How do we know it's going to continue? Here is yet another of those resources that we mentioned. It is the Big 40 Forum. Here we are. This is the Hawthorne Football Club section, the thread um, of... On Big Footy, we go to Hawthorne, we go to the, the training report here, the preseason report and the discussion. And again, these are fellow fans. These are fans of this club who are typing, who would go, track watchers, who are really invested in seeing their team develop and grow. Might have absolutely nothing to do with Supercoach, but hey, Supercoach is entirely predicated on football. And these football fans, these Hawthorne fans, would go out and have a look and see and some even share their thoughts, like this one here from this person who is a club legend, apparently joins in 20 of February, oh, 2011. Well done, mate. Ripping morning. You got down for a training session. Well done. Um, sensational. We love to see all of this stuff. It's very impressive. Deep in-depth analysis of all the other teams, all the other players. Some people were pretty bad. Uh, missed quite a few targets. Ball spent a lot of time on the ground. So that's not very good. Talked about Will Day coming off. Later confirmed that he's uh, got a stress um, fracture in his foot, which is not too bad, which is pretty sad, actually, for, for, for him. Hopefully he can get up and running again. And there is there, there was a section in here. I've, I've lost it. It's pretty small writing. But there was a section in here where it did mention, Aim, here we are, Amon, there he is, in this drill. There you go. There you go. Hey, bud. There he is. All right. So they move into an open half ground transition drill with one defender. Emphasis on changing angles and executing goal inside 50. Hard not to look good. Hard not look good in this drill, but Ginevan a handful of really poor kicks, perhaps tired legs. I love to see Ginevan fail stuff here, Ginevan. The rest of the boys rolling through here, particularly Hustway and Amon, make the drill look like easy work. So there he is. The defender making the defender Amon making the drill look like easy work. So these are the sort of things that we'd be sort of looking around and reading up and trying to, to find out all these little tidbits of information, which in isolation might not mean much. However, when you take it in totality with the stats, with the history, with how they performed on the day, with the team structure, with news, with other news, like GF being moved out of the back line to be playing on a wing. These all together point, paint a picture. And for those who sort of do the hard work, they can pick up on these things and identify various players who are going to take the next step, who are going to get a bump in score, just because someone historically might not have been particularly relevant like Carl Amon, just because he might not have been particularly relevant over the entire duration of his career, it doesn't mean that he is forever now doomed to be stuck in mediocrity when it comes to a super coach scoring perspective. All you need is a role change and for, and for things to go your way, 
And all of a sudden, you become a lot more relevant. And he, based on all this stuff that what I've discussed with you today and what we've seen here today, I genuinely reckon that he is in line for a top six to eight defender finish. And that's why I have him in my team. And for his price at $480,000, to average 110 or thereabouts is an absolute steal with defensive DPP as well, mind you. So there is going to be a lot of flexibility for those who are going to have Dacos, Daniel Curtin. Carl Amon should get it come round six. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my live, semi-live. Uh, this is a recording after all. This is my walkthrough of how I do my research and why I have decided that at this point of the season, of the preseason, I have got Carl Amon in my side. Let me know in the comments down below who else you would like me to go through in detail like this. Any players that you think you're really interested in uh, having my take on it by applying my process to assessing the viability of that player, please let me know down below. And also let me know if I've convinced you or if there's anything else that's giving you misgivings about the Carl Amon pick. Regardless of what it is you have to say, I look forward to reading it down in the comments below. Try my best to be as engaging as possible and trying to respond to all you wonderful people as much as I can because we're all in it together and we really want all of us to succeed. Like I said in the previous video, I would... It's my dream. It's my absolute dream for one of us here from the Center Bounce family, the Center Bounce community, to win the 50K one day. So, guys, make sure you subscribe if you're new, a like if you like what you saw here today, uh, and make sure you hit that notification bell because, as you might have noticed, we are absolutely popping off with content. Uh, almost as many videos as days as the, <laughs> as the game has been opened, and it is not dying down, so make sure... You stick with us every step of the way so that we can do the hard work so that you don't have to. Bye for now, guys. Have a ripper.